Hi Björn, so nice to meet you. Hi, and it's only virtual, but I'm so glad that you are here. Nice to meet you too. Björn, it's a fascinating project that you um, made happen now for the Kunstfestspiele Herrenhausen. Unfortunately, you are not there with your group in presence, but we see the performance in form of a film and it's called Van Eyck Diagrams, the legacy of Gerard van den Acker, art historian. So already this title is a little bit complex. What I get from it is that we are somehow in the world of Van Eyck, but we are also in a different world, in the world of this art historian Gerard van den Acker, who apparently um, is a figure that is contemporary. And so let me ask you first, if we focus on Van Eyck, why were you interested in you know, going deeper into his work, into what he has done. I mean, he is of course very famous of both of them, Jan and Hubert. Yes, that, that's right. Yes, it's, it's in fact, um, well, I'm already for a long time uh, fascinated by his work. And, and uh, as we are a Belgian uh, group, uh, also we are settled or established in Antwerp. We have a residency in Ghent the the city where the the, the Ghent altarpiece of the, the one of the most known works of Jan van Eyck, Jan and Hubert van Eyck is uh, kept so um, we got in fact uh, like um, the possibility to do a project around van Eyck it was in fact in this year well in fact already last year but uh, years are now all uh, mixing up you know 2020 to 20 every, everything drags on and and so uh, things are not clear anymore but anyhow in 2020 it was the van Eyck Jahr in 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 Belgium in Flanders and uh, we had already uh, quite a long time we did I did with Margarida Garcia mm -hmm. some and, and some other people of the group some some uh, research on on uh, on, on, on this figure of, of Gerard van den Acker, but also on, on Jan van Eyck. And we thought that it would be really interesting to, to, um, to take that perspective of a painter, also as a, as a music group, to take the perspective of a painter. In fact, maybe you, you know or you don't know, uh, we are, of course, we are quite specialized in early repertoires, in early music. Um, but we have always ha we always had this kind of like let's say deviated approach or twist or let maybe you can call it an aberrant approach um, in the sense that that I don't so much believe in um, in um, this historicistic approach yeah. to the past as you could maybe also understand from from the film it was a th thematics that also is con constantly there so um, even uh, the question of how do you just access the past. How, but in, in general, how do you get an experience of something that is different from your own biotope or your own world? How does that work? And, and one of the, the main things that we try to do is to uh, somehow bring that in, in yes. our operations, in our practices. And, uh, and of course we had, so we, we prepared a, a theater uh, performance. That was the, the main idea. We made a website, Dark Van Eyck, it's called. It's, it's, it's another view on, on this, the painter Jan van Eyck, maybe that's something I, we can still talk about. Of course, Jan van Eyck is one of these painters who is really canonized. It's the founding father almost of, let's say, early modern painting. Sure. There are a lot of cliches about this painter, also about his style, about this. And, and uh, well, as a little bit with the same with the, with, the, with the music we do, I had quite some intuitive doubts about how this, um, these uh, painters or these artists of the past are treated. They are often treated in this typical canonical way. And so, um, and, and, and then you start to dive yourself from your own intuitions or from your own practices into this uh, kind of uh, artistic, um, well, artistic works that these people produced and, and, and not so much only about the context, but also how these works a little bit jump out of their own context, histori historical context. And, and then you start to see things that, that you feel neglected in a way or another. And, and it's a little bit from these kind of sparkles and neglected pieces that we try to, to make um, performances. So it's a sort of, maybe it, it has something to do with art history, with musicology, but we try to find a punctum, a, a point, a, a weird point, something very specific from which we try to blow up a little bit, maybe explode or, or question 
well, the whole um, the whole approach of a, of, a, of an artist, maybe also sometimes the cliche image of a, of a painter like Jan van Eyck, for example. Right. I mean, you have a big smile on your face when you say this. And I mean, one has to say that when we watch the film, there is a lot of uh, humor in there and uh, a lot of um, uh, funny moments, really. And you you pick this approach. You also also said, well, whenever you deal with medieval music, you always try to sort of think a little bit outside the box to incorporate other genres also to um, think um, more about the energy maybe that the work has for you and bring this kind of energy also in our times. And I guess um, when you did this film and you chose the perspective of this contemporary art historian, Gerard, Gerard van den Acker, who is seeing the works of Van Eyck through his eyes, and you are following this perspective, basically. Um, and one has to say that he, uh, Van den Acker, takes a really very um, uh, strange approach. I, I mean, he focuses on extreme details in the work of Van Eyck, things that you would never pay attention to when you look at the, the big well-known works for the first time. And from this, he develops a kind of new perspective, a new entrance, mm. uh, a new insight into the work of Van Eyck that we thought we knew. And I guess that this is something that you want to show us, right? That, that it's always um, important to, to find a new perspective um, and to also bring the kind of energy from these old works to our times. So how exactly does that work for you as a group to bring it to our, um, to, to today, really? Mm. Yes, I, I like how you describe this, um, this approach of the, of, the, of the artworks. I think it's exactly like that. Um, so the question is less if the, if the point of view on the, on the works of art interpretation, if it's uh, true or not true, it's not that important. I mean, you can, you can doubt every interpretation of any, every painting. What does the painting mean? What does a work of art mean? I think what is important is that you, that you try to not give answers to the paintings, but it's, it's maybe a cliche, but that you, that you ask the right questions about right. them. So, and I think what, what through, through this approach of Van der Nacker, I think we found a way to, to, um, to approach these paintings in, in, a, in a way that, that has never been done before. You can, at the same time, I have to say that the guy's approach fits in a tradition which you can find in, in other art historians. I mean, uh, if you look, for example, someone uh, like Daniel Arras, it's, a, it's an art historian from France uh, who died in the beginning of the 21st century, but he has books on the detail, for example, on, on details in the painting. Also this, um, it's a little bit also what even Lacan wrote about when he talks about um, the, um, the point in a, in a painting, a sort of uh, objet, objet A, so he calls it, or Roland Barthes, he talks about the punctum. As you know, Grand Lavoie is also coming from, from Roland Barthes. So there is maybe this little bit French touch also in, in the approach of, of um, of works of art, maybe more a theoretical uh, point of view, speculative point of view, rather than, uh, let's say, a historical, historicist point of view. And that's something- I think That is something which I find really fascinating because, I mean, you are someone who is very clearly also coming from the historically informed background. I mean, you know a lot about um, performance practice of the medieval works of Renaissance work, of Baroque works, especially when it comes down to vocal um, music. And I mean, you, you know in detail about ornamentations and all this kind of thing, which on the one hand, of course, um, is, you know, knowing very much how it was and keeping to the book. And on the other hand, I have the feeling that the way how you approach these works yeah is with a lot of freedom and that in the end what is written what is given to us through the notes through the written down music if it is written down at all is only a starting point from which we can develop our performance today and our view on this is this kind of uh, the, the the way that you choose is that correct no I, I think it's absolutely like that I, I maybe i can add to that that such a project and then also the musical performance you make it with living people with your yes. your, your compagnon de route or your your fellow um, 
how you call it, partners in crime or whatever you call them, you're the, the people you work with, the, the, the singers that, that you see. We, uh, I worked for this project with four singers, Andrew Hallock, Albert Riera, Marius Peterson, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Arnaud Malfleet, the bass, um, which are already my, like a little bit my companions for a long time. They are a little bit the core of, of Grand Lavoie. And, and what I like about them is uh, their event, ev exactly their subjective investment in, uh, in, in, of course, what you say is too, these people are informed in a certain way. But what I like a lot maybe is even more the way they can uh, let go this information. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and would be going beyond info. I would like almost to say historically or a historical non-informed performance or something i don't know i i'm i'm for me this idea that you should inform yourself and then accumulate information and then you you guarantee a good performance i think this is absolutely uh, completely not true i don't believe in that at all i think on the contrary what we should uh, in fact constantly think about is how do we invest ourselves as subjects into this practice and how does that happen and what does that do in fact what so for me it's I'm also really fascinated by my own singers when they when they do a piece. It's not at all that I have a, 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 a genius view on this music, and then they should just do what I what I tell them. I of course I give some kind of maybe I have a little bit of hidden agenda, and I tell them maybe we can do like this and like that negotiations, and then they start to do it, and then they come mostly themselves with more interesting, um, uh, let's say, answers to my propositions. And so, and so, um, yeah, and there is this, there is this kind of investment in, in uh, and that's also why, how I think, well, we made first this theater project with, with them, with the four singers, and we, we prepared this whole show. Then, of course, through the whole situation, as we repeatedly call it in the film, the situation, uh, it didn't go. So we, we then decided in a very short time, in fact, also with the, with the festival, uh, together we decided, look, let's, at least not lose all this research, all this, uh, uh, yeah, we had all the whole script was there and so on. So let's transform that into this film. And then we made uh, this film in a very short time. Um, and I think it would be, have been impossible if, if there was not this kind of mentality that we have as a group, Grand Lavoie, like, um, which is, um, it, it's, it's also something that contaminates the rehearsals and the whole, maybe it's a sort of, maybe when you talk about this humor, this com comedy aspect, I think we have this, uh, all of us, we are like somehow, um, we take it serious, of course, what we do, we are, I mean, of course you take, but there is also at the same time, this kind of acknowledgement that what you are doing it's a it's a proposal it's a proposition it's something that you it's it's not something um uh, you don't want at all to convince people of a certain truth or something no you want to you 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 want to what you say you, you call it maybe energy i don't know if that's maybe could be maybe this but absolutely it's this kind of um even I think a lot, what plays a lot of ro a big role in the in the in the film also is the yeah the, the idea of failing what Beckett said, no, fail, fail and fail better, the failure, the idea of, and, and I think that this is absolutely an interesting, um, it's the point of, in comedy also, failure is, is, an, is a, a huge aspect, and so there is this, um, but it's also, I think, a point that is, that I feel always missing in classical music, mostly, it's something that we, when we refer to non-classical music, what we always have there is failure on stage, almost, mm -hmm. A jazz musician that does something, okay, he, he can be very virtuoso, but the real great masters, they have this aspect of not really knowing what they are doing and communicating this non-knowing, you know, not knowing. Right. And, and communicating even, like, let's say, the instrument, working with the failures of the instrument, working with the... So, and, and, and in classical music, well, it, it, let's call it maybe in a, in a psychoanalytic way, it's a quite a phallic practice. It means everything has to be perfect or as perfect as possible. Uh, everything has to be uh, impeccable, as they say in French, like voices should be clean and clear. The pronunciation is very important. And that's also something that you always hear in these historically informed performances. It's, it's all about uh, communicating something which is... Um, yeah, how shall I say that? Like, 
completely uh, immersive, maybe. That's maybe in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a way that I don't like it, let's say. I like so what I like is to, to show something to, 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 to the public that brings in also our own struggle, in a way, with what we are doing. So I like it a lot when you see the musicians, and that's in the film, I think, quite beautifully uh, succeeded, is that you see the singers really not, not, not really failing, but you see them struggling somehow. You see them engaged into, into this complex poly polyphony. And it, at the same time, you, the, it gives you transparency of the music, not through clear voices or clear, clear singing, but through struggle almost, through to negotiation or something. And that's something that, I, yeah, I don't know, sorry, I talked too much, maybe. Yeah. No, 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 you don't. But um, I, I really found that came very well across in the film. And um, I also found that, I mean, there were two aspects which I, um, which struck, struck me really was, uh, the one is that obviously the singers are also actors. I mean, they are, you know, you are sort of going through the whole process with them. Um, yeah. And the other thing is, that the atmosphere of these places, of course, adds a lot. And yeah. um, that we are also um, diving into this atmosphere of the uh, Abtai um, in Ghent. And yeah. we are you know, going with you to Portugal to this village, uh, Ariolus. 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 Yes. Um, to, to this aspect of them being also actors, I want to know how much is written in a kind of script and how much was actually improvised by them while making the film? Yeah, I think you, you already gave the answer a little bit yourself. There, is, there, there are p uh, parts are, of course, uh, parts of the script that we made before uh, in, the, in honor to, to Gerhard van den Acker. We had this performance ready, this, this, uh, let's say, this exposure of his archive and so on, where there were big parts about him and that's kind of witnessing how he is his, his, and so on. And, and also, so to say, for example, Marius Peterson, uh, the, the guy with the beard, the tenor, he's also a professional actor in, in Tallinn. Yeah. He's, he's, a, he's an actor. So, uh, of course, I mean, uh, let's say that, um, yeah, of course, music performance has also an, an acting uh, performative aspect. It's also performance. Of course, it's not really... Um, but I think because we were already having went, we went through all these rehearsals before for the theater piece, which we would bring live on stage. We had also the decor you see in the beginning. This is all. This is the decor really? of. It was all real. The decor. Of, is, uh, yeah, of course, it's it's all there. It's it's in fact, um, it's it's people maybe would say, oh, it's tragic. These poor people, but it's it's it's. Um, um, it's it's very strange that when you make something like that. Um, as you say, Dichtung und Wahrheit in German, um, it's um, in the end, you don't know anymore what is, uh, what, uh, what is real and what is not real. I mean, and, and I think also we live in quite surrealistic times. For artists, this feels, um, I, I don't say that I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm not really traumatized, let's say, by this, but somehow the whole, um, a part of what is also in the film, um, a little bit maybe the, the 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 way we deal with this crisis also the way um suddenly art is so-called important or not important at all um all the preparations you do because it's also about that it's not only that you lose a lot of money and that you lose a lot of uh let's say uh perf i mean the, 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 that you cannot perform for a whole year but it's also you lose mental mental um uh, capital you can almost say you, lo you lose a lot of uh, research that you that you i mean uh, it, it's like it's also I don't know if you work on a, on a, on a, on, a, on a, a project like that you want to one moment lay down your egg how you say that in, in German yeah, 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 you, you, sure. you want to you want to you want, you want to, deliver. to deliver the baby <laughs> yes you want to deliver the baby or you want to sure. it's not just like being on stage and 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 needing the needing the needing the not only just this narcissistic idea we need uh, some attention but it's also that. You you built up a lot. It's like you you work you work you write you built. There is a lot written. So what you said about there is a, there was a script. There was a script of 60, 70 pages. It's also really uh, nicely translated into German, which I'm. Uh, it's uh, some parts are reminding me of some wonderful writers in Germany that I that I that I love so much and 
from whom I'm inspired, of course. The, I think that even Stefan once mentioned also the, the this uh, the, the blending from Canetti, the idea of the, the little bit this professor. The um, but there are other other references, of course, also. But but um, so there is all that material, and then suddenly these things are are not are not going. So again, we thought instead of um, seeing then this transformation on on a first level, we said why not also putting inside the whole process of the yes. fact that it's not going. Yes. I find that very enriching, the fact that somehow you can transform impotence it into some potential. Yes, yes, right. And I mean, we see your frustration in the beginning of the film. We see how you get there to the performance place and you are not being let in and you are told, you know, all this is not happening, which is, of course, something that we have all experienced throughout yes. the past 14 months and um, which also hits our reality right now. Um, in a couple of days, we are going to have performances with audience. Right Great. now, we still don't. I mean, it's crazy and yes. it's going back and forth, which is um, a big challenge for everybody. But I also had the feeling that there came some kind of um, new creative spirit for you inputting this work into a kind of film. Um, you were just talking about uh, the question, you know, Wahrheit und Dichtung. And um, I wondered this figure of Gerard van den Acker and that you chose his perspective. An art historian, you know, whose name is unknown, I would say. And um, you picked him, how important is it actually, whether this um, person is known, is real, is unknown, is not real? I mean, is it of any importance for you for the, in, in the terms of inspiration? No. I, I can tell you that his real name was not Van der Nacker. That's, <laughs> that's, that's what I can tell you. But, but, um, but, uh, but of course, it's, um, well, um, Let's say that I think that uh, a lot of people in the in the in among the spectators will 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 recognize such a person. Mm -hmm. um, it's and you know that also for a part of course it's a little bit for sure when you are an artist. But I think if you are an academic, you also have that. There is always this uh, this moment when when you lose the pedals or something you know I, I love that a lot when you are you are a recognized artist and or you are just almost a recognized artist. same with an academic a guy that has an academic career tries to write a book but never really finishes the book mm -hmm. um well i know a lot of people in my i, I have the feeling i'm surrounded maybe i'm myself also such a person in the in the sense that we always struggle with the fact that we will as artists as crea so, so creative or want to be creative people that we somehow are afraid to fail and that we even fail also all the time and that we that we um that we well i'm for example even with this film i'm i'm not afraid to fail with this film even like there is something even in the way it's made it's quite long uh it's something that asks quite an investment i think of the of the of the of the spectator um i i hope it it's it, well, there is something as a merit also in the end for it, for the spectators, not only just um, infernal or nightmarish, but, but, um, but there, so um, what I wanted to say is that um, um, I, I like the, I, I see this film almost as a sort of novel mm -hmm. with a lot of layers, mm -hmm. uh, with a lot of um, perspectives, maybe perspectives on perspectives. Um, and 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 for example, also I would really, really, I hope, let's say, that people will not believe what is said about Jan van Eyck. I would really love that they think that what is so-called seen there and what is so-called exposed in the film, there are a lot of things which are really revelations, I think, and that they would go on the website and would or go in, in their in their library and look in books of if it's true what is there, like, and and they will discover if it's there or not I, I i i would of course want to say it's of course there but maybe it would be already say too much so um yeah how, how so um for me it's maybe even rediscovering this um the this initial um you called it energy i think it's nice this re, uh, maybe it's also this point of interest or point of of what's what's what drags you into a painting uh, 
in, I think that in in all of us there is some art historian in our, in all of us. Maybe less a musicologist because that sounds immediately already very complicated. But an art historian, it's a little bit like an anthropologist or something. We go to some to a, to a country, or we go to a, a and we are we are like anthropologists or like art historians. A little bit there is a kind of detective aspect in 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 this. There is kind of revelatory adventure, and so maybe the film is also about that, like re reinstalling this act of, of the adventure of, of art, like, and not only like creating art, but even looking at the painting could be a creative act, in fact. And looking it is a painting and also listening to the music, because I mean, the music yeah. is also playing a very important role. And maybe you can tell us um, how you brought those two together. I mean, how did you choose this music for this film, you know, in the connection yeah. with Van Eyck? And, how did you also feel that for yourself dealing with the artworks of Van Eyck helped you maybe seeing also the music in a different way? Yeah, one of the I think most wonderful pieces is uh, by Matteo de Perugia, this Elas Avril, um, which the singers, so this, they are in the refectorium of the St. Bath's Abbey and, uh, and I'm already on the way and then um, uh, there is the, the the caretaker of the of the of the of the abbey who talks about the gothic and it's like a sort of intertwining between these kind of little bit strange ideas on the gothic as ruin and and this elas avril and i find that one of the myself quite interesting moments where this piece is, is i think one of the most wonderful pieces ever written in the in the late um, this late Ars Subtilior style, no, it's the it's it's music from the beginning of the 15th century. Um, it's it's a very complicated style. In fact, it's it's a style which is a, you can say it's a little bit before Jan van Eyck, um, but uh, new, uh, recent musicological research uh, has shown that this Ars Subtilior style went on much longer than people thought. So. Um, so it's a little bit like maybe also in, in painting, you have the same things. It's not like uh, Jan van Eyck painted, uh, uh, one, once he painted with perspective and then he was only working with the, 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 the monofocal perspective and he could not paint in another way. In fact, you see that these composers were capable also of using different styles yeah. and, and composing more in a, let's say in the more modern way of Dufailly and Banchois, really contemporaries of van Eyck or composing in a more complex style, let's say, a contrapuntal more, more complex, like, for example, this Matteo de Perugia. And also funny is that the text is about April and May, about these months, April and May. So you get also a kind of seasonal connection there. The, the light is all the time changing. I don't know if you, because we, of course, we filmed it in, in, in April and, and you, you see constant uh, rain, sun, uh, the clouds, and it's some. In fact, it's the most difficult month to to film. Also, you should never film in April, I think, because <laughs> you can with to to do the edit afterwards. It's it's like uh, disasters because you have shots with with uh, sun and others without, and so on. So um, there is this whimsical idea of the of the, and then of course you get this. There is also a beautiful Agnus Day, I think, by, by Gilles Benchois, with which the singers sing at night when they are in the in, at night in the in the Sinbavos Abbey. Uh, and by the way, it's also um, so the that's the place where till last year the, the, the tombstone of, of Hubert van Eyck was kept there. And and they now put them in the in the Sint Bavos uh, Cathedral in, in, uh, in Ghent. Of course, I think the film, uh, in, in, for, a, for a big part, I see this film also as maybe an, a further step in what maybe kind of articulation of our poetica, you know, the poetica of Grand Lavoie, it's like a sort of, yeah, point of view on, on what art is, what art can do, uh, what art cannot do, how we are distanced from art, how, how we are also taken up by it without understanding why. That's something also that in early music is also very interesting why why are people taken by music from from the 15th century or something? Why do you? What is this point of attraction there? And I almost want, to, as I told you already, I, I really like that I can give or almost give people this key that they feel ah, but we understand why these singers are so intrigued by this music because we are not just hearing them performing this music, but we hear also their own. Um, 
their own in, their, their own um how you call that in english what what, what, what would, challenges challenges and their own um point of attraction in it okay. almost like mm -hmm. it, yeah. it's for me point of attraction is always the point but at the same time it's a blind spot right you know yeah. when you are so it's in love is the same no you are attracted to some some person but this point exactly is the blind spot of of your of your of your love affair or something you cannot explain it at all so uh, and at the same time it's the core so i think you circle around that and with art with with painting with music it's a little bit the same and what i try to do is trying to articulate this um, engagement maybe itself i don't know if that sounds maybe strange or i don't know no it doesn't sound strange at all and what the film also does maybe is that it shows that you as artists also learned not to take your yourselves too seriously that you also have a smile about what you do and you know yeah not only because you are enjoying it but also because seeing it in the bigger picture seeing it in the long run in the big perspective yeah. um it's allowed it's to also not take ourselves too seriously right absolutely yeah i think there is there is uh, there is this but this is something that keeps on going you know this right. constant and that's i think it's maybe that's then maybe if there is a sort of something to grab in for for people out of this film because it looks like maybe also a critical film. I think it's this exactly what you understood very well. It's this point of um, like, um, yeah, the this point that it's not just that you that you start to relativate things, but there is a point of surrealism in, in reality. Even yeah. as there were some people who in the beginning, when we made the film, then some people that were engaged in it, they looked at it and they said sometimes, Reality is much more crazy than what you showed in this film. <laughs> so I found that quite interesting that, in fact, it's not even that that crazy. Yes. Uh, I mean, for sure. And I think now more, it's also, this is something you, now we can laugh about that, but maybe that's what this Corona crisis has confronted everybody with, with a certain great, complete craziness in reality. Um, and that's not bad at all. I think it sometimes it brings us maybe, yeah, it shows a little bit like how things, um, how things maybe, how complicated things are in a way. Like, and 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 so um, maybe it's, uh, I think as uh, as an artist also you have the task maybe to to to. I was a little bit scared in the beginning that I thought should we just. Um, call a cat a cat, you know, call it by its name, I don't know, like, just really play it out almost, acting it out, this, it's almost like I was thinking it's the first Flemish COVID comedy a little bit, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's comedy, but that maybe it's also, there is, of course, it's, it's, it's also, it's not very, it's not terribly tragic, but it's, um, yeah, but there is some some point of of yeah, there is no no good comedy has not a point of seriousness, of course. No? Yeah, so yeah, and, it's, and this yeah. situation is very demanding for yeah. every artist, uh, and and um, you know, maybe maybe this in a very clear way. Yeah, maybe our way as Grand Lava to deal sometimes with things is maybe that we sometimes prefer to to make a comedy of it than. Uh, take it too serious in the sense of also I sometimes have problems with this um, constant um, imperative of uh, showing that we are not taken by what happens mm -hmm. like we are still positive look you know constant being positive I, I don't want to it's not that I don't want to be that I want to be per se negative but I think sometimes it's good to to act out some negativity or to be critical also to and to and to articulate it yeah in a, in a um it, it, it's the same with the music itself i think i try not too much to be submitted to this kind of early music uh standards or parameters like this music has to be of course you can imagine i'm constantly confronted with this but when we bring out a new cd and you get the the buckets of of also nice critics of course but there are constantly from this corner like it's crazy. It's, uh, people find it, uh, but then, then it's it's like interesting because I think at least we confronted some people with 
the fact with, with their own common sense and their own cliche matic idea of thinking about how things should be performed and how things should be and so on and so forth. So, so well, I don't know. Yeah, what can I say more? No, I mean, <laughs> yes, you said, and, and you, you made it very clear that sort of there needs to be not only the positivity, but you can also be honest about the negative aspects yeah. that happen right now. And I think, you know, you mentioned earlier that uh, filming in April is very difficult because you have the sun and the rain and the thunder and the cold and the warmth and everything. And that's maybe exactly true about also, um, you know, what we can be open about and honest about that our feelings are also sometimes sun, sometimes rain, sometimes thunder, and sometimes it's really cold. And um, I think there is yes. a lot of this in this film. Well, Björn, it was so fascinating to talk to you. Yes. Thank maybe you. maybe uh, let, let, let there be no misunderstanding that um, I can tell you that I'm really glad that the festival in Hannover, uh, well, the, 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 the Kunstfestspiele and, and Stefan, that they kept on believing in this uh, yeah. process, that they also, uh, in fact, uh, helped us to to transform that into this film. I'm, we are, in fact, ourselves really happy afterwards that we did that, that we made this eternal monument to Gerhard van den Acker. You know. Yes, of course. Uh, so yes. the guy can, the guy will. We 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 helped him not to be forgotten anymore. You know. He now like, has a monument. He has his own monument in this in this Abraham film. But and I have to. I I can only. Uh, show my gratefulness to, to 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 the festival and to of course the, the to the Bellock and in Ghent also that these were the, the main and the city of Ghent they were the main collaborators of this project. Well, we started to develop that and it, all this process and so on. And I'm really really happy that they never gave up with us, mm -hmm. and and that we that we okay it's 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 online, it's streamed. There is not much physical and so on, but I'm. Somehow, I think with what I think the, the film gave new poss but what you said also I think before the film gave us new potentials, new possibilities which we would never be able to even articulate in the theater show. Right. Yeah. So there is a lot to ruminate and to chew on in this film. I think some people will probably hate it or love it, and 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 you can rewatch it also. There is this kind of element that I do it myself also. I look a lot of films on my just even on my smartphone. And why not? I, te I tested to do the film, to look at the film, in and it's possible. And and you and you discover new things. I'm sure, absolutely. I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope. Of course. Yeah. Jan, thank you so. so much that you took time for this talk, and um, thank, you. thank you that you made this film for the audience of the Kunstfestspiele. Great. Thank you thank so you much. For, thank you for the talk. Hope to see you in person sometime soon. Bye. Yes, would be great. Bye bye. <laughs>